Hello everyone, it is Coach Kylie, and today we are going to be going over some vaulting basics. So some things that you are going to be needing are something that you can jump over, not something too big or too small. I'm going to be using just a little shoe, it's just a little visual aid um, for some of the drills that we're going to be doing. And then you also need some sort of box, or if you're if you can do it on your couch, um, we're just going to be doing switch feet, so something that you can get your feet on top of. Um, easily and then switch them. I'll show you later um, what you will need that for. And then this is not required at all, but if you have some sidewalk chalk, you can go ahead and draw a little hopscotch because um, we are going to be doing hopscotch as one of our drills and it's fun to be outside playing with chalk. So you guys can go ahead and get that, get all those things together and we're going to get started. All right, so some of the most important things in vaulting is our run and our board approach. So that's what we're gonna be starting with. We're gonna start with our run really quickly. When we are doing our running, it is really important that our arms and our legs stay opposite with each other. So I will show you that right now. All right, so the first thing that we're actually gonna do, we're just gonna do some marching. So we're gonna lift our right leg or your left leg and your opposite arm and then you're gonna switch. So just getting this motion down. Once you get the opposite arm, opposite leg, then you can try and go a little bit faster. And eventually into a jog. And to quick feet. All right. Um, keeping the arms consistent with switching back and forth and keeping your knees up is gonna be the key to um, what we just did. And then the next thing that we're going to do is where our box comes in, into our little switch feet. So I'll just move this down just a little bit so you can see. We're going to put one leg up on the box. You don't have to put all your weight on it. Actually, don't put all your weight on it. Most of your weight is going to be on this leg right here. You're just going to be lightly putting this foot here, lifting one arm up, and then you're just going to be switching your feet and your arms. So it's going to look like this. Switch. And then again. And again. And just like the running and marching that we did, you can progressively get faster and faster each time you do it. This drill is just getting our legs up and getting, making sure our arms are switching as well as the last one. All right, and that's actually all the running drills that I have for you right now. Um, the next thing that we're gonna be doing are is the board approach. So this is where our shoe is going to come in or whatever you have. You can just place it on the ground and then we are going to get started. All right, so if you can see my shoe right here, um, that's what we're going to be working with here. Our board approach is basically going from one foot to two feet. So this is going to be the most basic thing that we do with this. Oh, actually, sorry, hopscotch. You can start with hopscotch. Um, going from one to two feet, it's just a really easy way to get in our minds transitioning from one to two feet. So um, instead of doing hopscotch like this, we want to focus on the one foot to two foot. So you're going to be here. Okay. And if you can, um, try and do opposite feet just to be good on both legs instead of just one. Try and do opposite feet every time that you do it. Um, so that's going to be the most basic thing. The next thing is going to be with our shoe right here. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to lift our leg up, point your toe obviously. Um, your arms can just stay out in front of you like this, and you're going to jump to two feet. So you're going to be here, jump, two, and freeze. Okay, and you can do that a couple more times. One foot up, jump, and freeze. All right. When I am doing the one to two foot that I just did, my arms were down the whole time. Um, the reason my arms are down the whole time is because when we go to our two feet, our arms have to be down when we're on the board. Um, it just gives us an extra little spring for when we do um, start our little vaulting or our forward rolls or anything like that. Hands need to be down just so they can quickly come up and we can go up into the ceiling. Well, not the ceiling, but all right. So you can actually add an arm swing onto this. So I will show you what that will look like. Just gonna be here. You're gonna do a 
small arm swing to this. So, now that you saw what my feet were doing, I'm going to show you what my arms are doing. So, one foot out, just a small little baby arm swing. Two um, bent knees and hands down. The next thing that we're going to be doing is a one to two foot with a jump added onto it. So when we jump, our arms are going to follow through all the way up to our ears. So it's going to look something like this. We're still going to keep the one to two foot that we were just doing, but we're going to add a jump. So we're going to be here, um, baby arm swing, and jump. Okay. So we're going to be here again, arm swing, jump. All right. If you can't connect it like I just done, then you can do it how I did it the first time. You can do your baby arm swing to a front breeze, and then you can do a big straight jump with your arms over your ears, and then of course landing in our freeze position. All right. And then the next thing that we can do just to make it a little bit harder, you can walk into it or you can run into it. I can show you the walking. I can't really run in here, but I can show you what it would look like to walk into it. Just gonna be going, transitioning from what it would be like to run, lift, and down. Of course, you can add the jump as well. All right, the next little segment is going to be a jumping segment or a squat jumping segment um, and a lunging to jump segment. Um, it's just gonna be basically strengthening our legs for our run, because when we do our runs, we do wanna be high, but we also wanna be going forward. So one of the things that you can do, you can do a squat jump or a squat to a jump. So you're just going to go ahead and squat down as far as you can. And when you jump, your arms are going to explode down like this, and you're going to go as high as you can jumping. And you can come back to a squat again. Good. Um, this is definitely going to burn some of your legs. So if you can only do a few of them, that's perfectly fine. But I would try and do at least like five to ten of these. After you do the squat straight up, I want you to try and squat and jump as far forward as you can. So this is our, instead of our arms going straight up, they're going to be going out in front of us and then up. So it's going to look like this. Okay. You guys can challenge each other, see how far you guys can go. You can use your sidewalk chop to do that if you want. Um, but yeah. So jumping out and then up. I'd recommend doing at least five to 10 of these. If you can do more, then go ahead and try and do that. The last thing that we're gonna do is just gonna be firing our quads for when we do end up sprinting. Um, we're gonna be doing a reverse lunge. So a lunge like this. We're gonna be doing a lunge like this. My knee doesn't touch the ground. It's actually gonna be harder if you do put it on the ground just to get up off of it. So your knee's going to be hovering off the ground, your arms, your, if your left leg is in front, your right leg is up, or your right arm is up, and you're going to switch into a jump like this. So it's going to look like that. I'll show you with the complete jump. So you're going to reverse lunge, jump, okay? And you can obviously do it on your other leg too, jump. This is just getting your legs fired up. For when we do sprint, um, it'll be easier and your legs will be strong enough to do it. All right, and then the last thing are Spider-Man handstands. All right, I currently do not have the space to be able to show you what these Spider-Man handstands would look like, but I did draw it out on a little piece of paper. Okay, I did have to draw it backwards, so excuse my handwriting, but Spider-Man handstands. So you're going to start close to the wall, so it's going to look like this. You should be almost straight up and down. If you can't get that close to the wall, it's perfectly fine. Go as close as you can, staying tight. Um, really important when we go close to the wall not to let our belly touch the wall. Our belly should be sucked in as tight as we can. Okay, Our legs really shouldn't be touching the wall either unless we're literally all the way up against it. But really just your toes should be touching the wall when you do Spider-Man handstands. All right. And then the next one is going to be um, far from the wall. So you're going to look something like this. Obviously, your toes are going to have to come down from um, when you do close to the wall, because when you're close, your toes go up. 
and then when you're further away, they come down. Another important thing, same as when we do close to the wall, is keeping our belly really tight. Um, it's super easy when we go far away from the wall to let your belly flap to the ground, but we have to keep it really, really tight. Try and stay round the whole time. So remember, rounding when our shoulders are like this. Okay, so try and stay round. Keep your belly in, keep your butt in, everything like that. And then the last thing is basically just these two again, but you're just gonna be walking in and out. So, <laughs> walk hands in and out. So you can start close to the wall or far away. You're gonna walk your hands, walk, 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 until you're far from the wall, and then you can walk them back close to the wall. This is gonna be really hard to do, especially if you get super close and super far from the wall. Um, definitely works out a lot of core. When you are doing this, um, I recommend that you try and stay as tight as you can and not let your hips um, fall back and forth when you are walking. Try and stay like a stiff board walking. So not big steps forward or backwards. Try and do little steps and staying super duper tight in your chest and your abs. Okay, and these handstands, the reason that we do close and far for vaulting especially is because when we do end up doing front handsprings over the table, we enter and we hit the board like, or we hit the vault and our hands are down here, our legs are up here. We hit it and we are in this position. So this is the far away handstand. We have to learn to be tight when our body is not all the way upside down. Okay, we have to be tight even when we're at a little angle here. And then of course we eventually go up to a full handstand where like most handstands or Spider-Man handstands, we're all the way up against the wall and then we fall to our back or go to our feet, whichever we end up doing. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why we do the you far from wall and close to wall Spider-Man handstands. All right, and that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little vaulting at home. I know it's kind of hard to do some vaulting stuff at home, but um, hey, we got it done. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing more videos, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this vaulting one and I'll see you guys back at the gym.